Okay, Pathfinders 3, 2, and 1. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. My name is Mobby, and today we're going to play Pathfinder Adventures Rise of the Rune Lords. Now, to give you guys a quick little rundown on the history that I have with this game, as well as what this game is all about, Pathfinders started off as a board game pretty much like a dungeon crawler with random event type of thing with lots of adventures and expansions it's a, it's a really big franchise um, and they recently uh, made a mobile app that you can play and download so it's not really the board game but it's like a digital version of it that is more like a card game so now fast forward ahead and this is the steam version i'm now playing it, it came out like i think a uh, june 15th or 16th right it just came out and I was able to pick it up. I played the tutorial and I thought it would be a pretty fun series if you guys are into this. I think it's really, really awesome. So, like I said, I did go through the tutorial and I will be playing a campaign starting right from the beginning. And I will be, you know, explaining how the game works as we go along. So hopefully you guys can follow along closely because I think this game is really, really fun. So let's go and hey if if you decide you like the game and you want me to make more videos please just let me know in the comments and i'll be sure to go ahead and make a lot more so let's start so pretty much how the game works is there are a lot of scenarios that you go through making characters now i have the base game here and uh which has a lot of characters unlocked so what happens is it's loading um you make a party of a couple of characters and they give you the choice so it says a uh, recommended party size is three to four you can make up to six um because i you know i'm not too experienced with the game but i really like the mechanics and like how it plays i'm gonna do three characters so we're gonna create some new characters here there are a lot of characters so there's tons of classes with skills, powers, you can turn them into upgrades. Like for instance, this bard can be a virtuoso with other abilities, card lists, and of course, their completion rating on scenarios. There's tons of them. So we're gonna do three of them. Now, for my first character, um, I have not played with any of these other characters. Through the tutorial, you learn how to use Marizel and Kyra, which is a uh, rogue elf and a human cleric now i want to go three characters but i want to go three different ones i've never used before because i think that'll be fun so i want to start off with the awesome human male fighter here who's uh, really good with uh, strength and charisma that's really awesome so we'll go ahead and grab this guy right here i will name him uh, what's what's a good like human fighter name um let's see let's call him uh mukuro mukuro yeah mukuro and we'll go ahead and choose him. We'll get another character, another new one. And we'll have a paladin. I, w I want one with healing, right? This is a human barbarian. Ooh, that's cool. Ooh, a monk. Look at that acrobatics and fortitude. Does he have anything with healing? He has some inspiration and unarmed strike. That's actually, I don't know, a monk is awesome. Okay, but I am gonna stick with Kyra because she is a healer and I know, you know, she, she plays well. So we'll go Kyra, but then we'll name her something else. So instead of, uh, let's go with um, something with the S. I feel like something with the S. Sandra. I don't know. Okay, so Mukuro, Sandra is our healer. And then we, we want to have like some sort of a wild card or something like that. What does this halfling do? Really good intelligence and charisma. I want one with the dexterity. This is a dwarf ranger. Ooh, yeah, we should, we should get a dwarf on our team. That'd be really cool. Okay, we have a dwarf, a uh, bunch of powers, which we'll figure out later. So, we have a dwarf, guys. We have a dwarf, this is our, is our name. Let's go, oh, look, they have a name for him, Harsk. Uh, let's keep H, but we'll do something else. Let's go Hudgens. Hudgens, I don't know why. So, this is our party, and I'll, don't worry, I will explain how the game works, but uh, this is good. Okay, so two characters I've never used before. And so we got a, a, a human fighter. And we've got a uh, human cleric. And we have a male dwarf ranger. This should be fun. So let's go in and get the party started. Okay, so Pathfinder is, is a game where you grab your characters. 
and you have a deck for them. Let me show you the managed deck thing. So every character starts off with a couple of decks here. So you can see here, there's a couple of cards that they start off with. You got um, you, you got the basic ally cards, cards. You got um, equipment such as shields and armors, and then you have you know blessings and stuff like that, which help you out. A lot of weapons and things. Each character has their own. There's spells as well, such as cure. And I've never seen this guy's stuff before. He's a crow. It's like a blessing or something. So I don't know their as particular you know, set of stuff. So it's really, really awesome. So everyone has their own things. And what's really amazing is this game works like a campaign. So I, I, I don't want to call this like a trading card game or anything. But what pretty much happens is you go through a campaign. You get rewards. For, for instance, we're going to play Brigand Doom. Now, Bring on Doom is the only um, scenario slash quest that is open for us because we have, you know, I just started the game. I'm not completing any of it yet, so it's all, you know, not available to play. So we have to go one by one, but I really don't mind. Starting from the beginning is a good thing. So I will explain everything as we go along. Um, let's just start the scenario. So the goal, the ultimate goal of the scenario, oh, you can choose the difficulty. If, oh, look at that. No wild cards. You get some reward bonuses. That's pretty cool. So, the ultimate goal of the scenario is to defeat the villain called Jibrael Visky. He also has henchmen who are bandits. Now, during this scenario, if a monster power causes you to recharge one or more cards, do so and then draw the same number of cards you recharge. The scenario reward, each character receives a random item. Now, what's awesome is they permanently keep it in their deck. Permanently keep it. I can choose to, you know, take it out, put it in. But sometimes cards can get destroyed, which is, um, you know, crazy. Um, there are, um, so there is soft core, pretty much what, I, what I, which I'm playing, where if a character dies, you know, they come back in the next scenario. But you can play hardcore, and that means they're gone forever, which is insane. We're gonna play soft core right now. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with this, um, this thing, and well, let's explain how it works. Like I said, I did the tutorial. It took about uh, an hour and a half, and so I, I. I think I know everything that's going on here. So let's begin with our story of the campaign of the human fighter, the human cleric, and the dwarf. So this is Sandpoint. Doesn't seem like much. I bet there's a place to get a drink or three and some soft company while we're at it. No, I'm saying. All right. Charming as ever, Valeros. I'm sure Serenay has more in store for us. I wish they would say, like, the character that I chose here, like, the nickname there. Okay, Vin Vinder here. You there, you look equipped and able. I can't get a supply of a supply shipment past the waterfront these days. That brigand or Jubre Visky and his thugs are robbing honest folk in the streets. Our incompetent sheriff can't seem to do a thing about it. So, a good old-fashioned bounty hunt. Sounds like a good way to introduce myself to the locals. You'll need my sharp eyes and steady hand to flush him out. Count me in. So there we go. There's just a party going around. This is good. During the scenario. Okay, that's the thing we just read. Okay, so this is Jubral Visky. And uh, let's see. So our ultimate goal is to defeat this guy. And these are his bandits. It looks like he has one, two, three, four. So four bandits. So five cards are mixed in five areas like so. So there are five areas. Um, there's usually more or less areas in a scenario depending on how many characters you have. For instance, if I only had two people in a party instead of three, what would happen is there will be probably be four areas instead of five. So the boss is hidden in one of these areas and the ultimate goal is to flush him out and destroy him. I have three characters to put in each one of these, right? So the goal is every place has a specific card set. Um, there are weapons, items, blessings, monsters, and henchmen, and villains. It's a randomly generated thing, so you go in using your own sort of deck, and you, you go in and you defeat it. So once you defeat an area, you automatically close it. You might get bonuses for being it closed, but the ultimate goal, like I said, is to flush them out. So you want to close all the areas and corner the boss to kill it. If I happen to find a boss in one of these, um, and there's other areas open, if I defeat the boss, he'll run to another one. So, you are pressed for time, actually. There are 30 turns 
and you have 30 turns to catch the boss. It's, it's a, there's a lot to explain, but trust me, guys, this is a really, really good um, single-player like strategy card game. I really recommend you get it. I'm uploading this on, uh, I think, the, the 17th. Uh, I'm it probably going to see what's today. Yeah, I'm going to be uploading this on the 17th, and until the I think the 20th or the 22nd, it's on sale for about 20 to 25%. So I got it for about 18 bucks. If you're into this, 100% uh, get it. Okay. Now they got the basic gist. I'll be learning. I'll teach you the mechanics as we go along. All right. So these all have different cards. And on the top left, at this location, you may discard two cards to invade an encounter. So there's special abilities um, to help you or, or handicap you. And so when you close the location, so to close the location, you have to do this thing. Succeed at a dexterity or stealth check. Succeed at a wisdom. Um, defeat a random minion, succeed at an intelligence check, as also there's a, something that happens when it's closed here. When you end your turn here, you may bury a card for your discard pile. So, we want to pick characters that are good for each area. Um, our dwarf is really good with uh, dexterity, so I'm going to put him here. Now, succeed at a wisdom or survival check. Our cleric should be good at wisdom, I think that's what it was. And then the farmhouse, summon and defeat a random monster. I'm going to assume that our warrior is really good at defeating monsters. So we're placing all of our people down. Now you can't put them together, but it's really important to split up your resources and really corner the boss down. So we're going to go ahead and add these guys here and let the games begin. Now pick my order by dragging the portraits. You can see who goes first. We'll go like, like this. This seems good. Okay, so now the game begins. Uh, you are, like I said, you are pressed for time. You have 30 turns to defeat this boss, and turn turn order goes in really weird ways. For instance, not everyone gets 30 turns. It's 30 turns spread across all of your characters. So, welcome to the farmhouse. This is what happens when you go inside one of the areas here. So you can see up here, there's 29 turns, and you can move locations if you want. So let me explain what's going to happen here. So this is the farmhouse deck. This is you explore it and when you open it up you get either a monster weapon or stuff like that. On the top left here there are icons to tell you exactly what is in the decks. So we know 100% there are three monsters and a question mark. The question mark is either the henchman or the you know the big baddie. So we know, hey, if we keep looking, we might get three items or something like that. So, like I said, it's it's composed of ten cards of these. And my deck is for... I have... Okay, so I have eleven cards in my deck left. So, total from in my hand and in my deck left, I have fifteen cards. But what you might be surprised to know is that fifteen cards equal fifteen health. Like, how the heck does that work? Well... We'll find out. So my character's hand limit is four. You can increase it as they level up. So I've never played this character before, so I want to quickly look at what he can do. So when you attack, your strength is always a D10, which is good. A D10 plus a strength of three, unless you have a weapon. And then there's, if you ever played anything like a board game-ish or Dungeons and Dragons like, you will recognize these terms like D8, like two D10s, uh, you know, dexterity checks. It, it, it's all like a RNG based for the most part, but you have control over the chances of, you know, succeeding or failing um, events and battles. So, um, it's, you know, let's just check this out. So really good with strength and really weak in wisdom. And that's why I try to have a party which has a good, um, you know, a, a good range of stuff here. No one's really good in with intelligence, but at least we have some good stuff in everything. So I really want to look at their powers here. Hand size is four. My character is proficient in light armor. Heavy armor and weapon. Teamwork, what is this? Add one D4 to another character's combat at your location. Oh, so that's really oh that's really good working together. That's good. And weapon mastery ability. When you play a weapon, you may recharge it instead of discarding it. That's really, really nice. I'll explain what they all do later. I must look. Okay, so let's just begin and I will go through it all. So random card. Ooh, our first one is a battered chest. So let me explain how this works. This card right here, if I click on it, it'll show me what it does. So on the right side here, when you encounter a card, they're usually going to have some checks here on the right side that you can choose how to go about it. So I can either melee it up or I can drop down this thing. I can go, you know what? My character is good with dexterity. I'm going to do dexterity. 
If I do, it shows my ability. My, my highest dexterity um, dice here is an 8, while my melee is a 10 plus 3. It's a plus 3 because my character. So, you can either kill it with strength or melee, or dexterity disabled. So obviously, we want to go with melee, which is the plus 3. It tells me that the, the uh, roll chance, which is 60%. So I could roll, and hopefully get it. If we win, then we get 1d4 of random new items. Meaning, um, we roll a dice of 4, and we get new random items to put in our deck, effectively increasing our maximum health. And if undefeated, you just get rid of it. So... Another thing to really know is you can increase your chances by using allies, weapons, um, you know, items, or even blessings like this. So if I activate this blessing of the gods here, I can uh, discard it to add one die to any check. I can discard it, and now I get an automatic another d10. Or if it was a d8, I get another d8, and then your chances increase, but we don't want to get rid of it. I think a roll of 60% is good. Now... What really makes the game insane crazy is you have to do card management. Not only do does my guy have to worry about not running out of cards, but I can use other people's, my, uh, my other character's abilities. For instance, her card, she starts with four blessings of the god. It's random, by the way, in their deck. And then the dwarf here starts off with one blessing. Now, 60% is good. But it's not good enough. So because um, good old... Uh, what the hell is her name here? Oh my god, I put the names down. Um, what's her name? Kyra. Wait, I, didn't I name them? Oh my god, I named them something else. I guess I forgot to save it. Okay, we're going with the default names of Valoros, Kyra, and Harsk. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to activate her Blessing of the Gun to increase Valoros' ability. So now it's a 94% chance. Let's do this. You roll it by dragging. I got a 23 overkill, but there's no way I wanted to miss a 60% chance on a good item like this. So we roll. And we got... Oh my... Oh, that's really good, guys. We got four random items to keep. All right. We got a token. Let's, let's look at these, shall we? Okay. So we got a Lux Stone. Hmm. So, we can discard this card to add to your check. So, I'm going to quickly go over some of the um, the key terms. Okay. So, discard means it goes to the discard pile, obviously. Um, you can recharge it. If you recharge an item, it goes back into the deck to be picked up. If you bury it, it is gone for the scenario, which is, it's not gone. But if you banish it, it is gone from your deck permanently. So, you want to really... You know, metagame your deck and make sure you know which is good for your characters and swap them out. So remember, we just got four items to keep forever unless they banish it. So this is good for um, one to your check. Now this is any check, I believe. Uh, yeah, one to your check. So if it was a combat check, if it was a dexterity check, we can you know, discard it to do that. If you would fail a check by one, you may bury it to succeed it. So that's really good. Next up is a Bracers of Protection Magic Accessory. Recharge this card to reduce combat damage dealt to you by one. I'll explain what combat does later. Two more items. The Orb of Frost. On a character's combat check, display this card. While displayed, add 1d4 and the cold trait to that character's combat checks. At the end of the turn, if you do not have either the Arcane or Divine, banish it. Otherwise, bury it. So we can like get the ability from our guy but he obviously does not have arcane or divine skill so it's going to be vanished um however if we do decide to keep it like if i don't use it and i discard it we can take it out of his deck later after the scenario is done and put it into another deck which is pretty good and finally we have the token of remembrance bury this card to recharge a spell from your discard pile you must have a skill matching so these two items we don't want on our warrior i will probably discard them somehow some way however i am not done yet okay so after you've done all that you can now end your turn if you end your turn though you must discard your hand down to your hand limit valoros is this four i think kira's is five so i would have to discard down meaning i would have to throw it to the discard pile and then end my turn after that it goes to the next person who is kyra's turn and the 29 will go down to 28 however like I said, you have a specific time limit to do so. There are 9 cards left and I want to defeat and close the place as quick as possible. And there are ways to draw more exploration tokens each turn, such as this, the Night Watch. So I can use his ability, which is recharge it to add 1 to the perception, 
or you can discard it to explore the location, which I will do that. So it goes here, and now we're able to draw a new one, effectively doing two turns in one, which is really, really important. So we found another item. This is the Tome of Knowledge. What is this do? I've never seen it before. Um, reveal this card to add a 1d6 to any knowledge check. Recharge this card um, to succeed at your knowledge check. Wait, what? So reveal it to add 1d6 for sure, and then recharge it to succeed. That's weird. All right, so uh, I'm not too keen on getting it. I don't want to use any more blessings. A luck stone would be nice, but I think I'll save that. Actually, no. I'm going to use this right now. I'm going to use the luck stone. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this to add a plus one. We can see it right here. And then I can bury it. Okay, so if I end up getting a four here then I can bury it for the scenario and then I can finish it. So it's a 50% chance. If I get it or not, I don't really mind. And we got it, 100%. So that's another card added to the deck. So I could recharge, I could recharge this card by doing a survival of nine. Does my character have a survival like rating though? Oh, wisdom. So my wisdom and survival are both D4s. So this is a 100% fail. So it's going to be gone in the discard pile. There are ways to get cards back from the discard. You can heal them. <laughs> healing them, right? Healing them or other cards out that way. So I'm going to end my turn. And we have to discard down. So I'm, I'm going to try to keep this in my discard pile and not bury them. We'll get rid of them. And we'll get rid of the Tomb of Knowledge. There you go. So that's done. That's my turn. That's just one turn. Now we're down to 28. And here we go, we're in the woods now. So everything that we just did with Valoros, it means nothing because this person is all on their own. Except they went down, they are now down to um, four cards because we use one of her blessings of gods to help out Valoros. So it's teamwork, building up, and it does scale. You might be saying, why don't I just get six people? Remember, um, enemies and the places scale on it, so you got to do a lot of management. I think three is good enough for me right now. This is my this is my first scenario, and I'm basically reteaching myself and you guys because I literally just finished the tutorial. But I'm really excited. I really wanted to just start the episode, so here we go. Let's begin. Oh, I got a large chest here. Okay, so let me look at the location. Undefeated monsters or henchmen are banished are banished. Undefeated monster other than villains. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to be able to do this at all. M my melee is the best thing, unless I use a blessing. Here's the deal though, I think it's really important that we get this. Reason being, we don't have a weapon in our hand, so I want to activate one blessing of the god here, make it a 40% chance, and I'm going to use... Unfortunately, you can't use another one. What does this spell do? Guidance. Discard this card to add one to any check. After playing, if you do not have the divine skill, banish it. Otherwise, the fine forward to recharge it. Now, our character absolutely has divine, plus a uh, divine D12 and two. So, guys, is a very good card. So, we're adding one to it, which makes it a 58% chance. Hopefully, we get it. Come on, I would love this chest. It's amazing. Ah, should I? Okay, you know, it's really important that we get a weapon here. So, I'm actually going to use a second blessing here. If we lose this, it's bad. Oh my god, we barely made it. So we got it. And I'm going to recharge this by making a skill check of 4 plus on my divine. So now it goes back into my deck. It's now 10 to 11, you can see here. And now we're going to reroll to get some new weapons. Now, a difference between this chest and the one that Valoros got is Kyra's chest gets weapons. You know, not necessarily, you know, uh, potions or anything. It's weapons, which we need. So roll. Three is good. I think two and up is great. That's fine. So three weapons directly into my hand, which is so good. Let's take a peek at these weapons and see which one's going to be used for us in the future. This is the Ransor. For your combat check, reveal it. So this one it says reveal, which means after you use it in a combat, you don't get rid of it. You just reveal it and you put it back in your hand. So your melee skill plus 2d4. If not proficient with weapons. Oh, so here's the deal. If she's not good with proficiency in weapons, which um, she is not. You can see it's um, it's zoned out here. It's a grayed out. Then the bad part is the difficulty of the check is increased by four, which pretty much uh, negates one of these D4s essentially, potentially. And if you would fail this check, you may discard it to reroll the dice and take the new result. It's a pretty good card. This is a dull short sword. Ugh. For your combat check, reveal it. Melee plus 1D6. 
It's actually not bad. Plus 1d6 push your melee. That's good. You may additionally discard this card to add another d4. If not proficient, increase up by 4. And we got the superior longsword. Reveal it. Strength and melee plus d8. And I can discard it for 1d6. So a lot of these are just like discard it to, to you know, get the benefit and stuff. And if not, and all of these require the proficiency in weapons, which is bad. Um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and discard this so we can continue going. We got ourselves a bugbear. This is our first combat. All right, let me show you what the what monster things do. So you can see um, their attributes here and the check to defeat. You literally just need to get a 10 and it's over. Here's his power. Sometimes they have abilities that work, you know, before you fight or after you fight, during. If undefeated, bury a weapon from your discard pile. Ooh, so if we lose, a card will not be able to be cured. Um, you know, recharge this scenario. It's gone, which is it's not the worst. It's better than banished. Okay, so, so far we will be using our combat melee, which is 1d6 plus 2, which is an 8. 0% chance. You want to add one of these weapons for sure. Um, let's reveal the Ransor. So if I reveal this, we have a 10% chance. And the reason being, we're not proficient. It went up by a 10 right here. I mean, sorry, it went up by 4. We're going to get wrecked. Um, so I kind of want to, you may additionally discard this card to add another D4. So if I discard, we get 1D6 and a D4 for discarding it. It's still not good. It's 23% chance. We can discard this again and it get a 61% chance. <sighs> it's just we're not proficient in it, you know? Um, do I want to use a blessing here? I really don't want our first combat to fail, but uh, we're going to have to take some chances here. This is the best it's going to get. 61%. Go. 15. We barely beat it by one. So if we hit 14, we would win. So you can see on the right, we killed them. We've got two gold. Um, gold, it's used for other stuff later. Let's not worry about that. So both on Valoros and Kyrus's first turn, we got through two cards, which is great. But remember, you have to keep... You know, to, to research more, you have to... Like, I can keep going, but I have to discard this if I want to. Or wait one turn, which we will. So next is going to be good old... What's your name? Hudgens Has Harsk? All right, Harsk. Let's do this. I don't know your abilities. Okay, so hand size is five. Good in light armor weapon. And this is, an, this is a uh, skill called Scout Ahead. At the end of your turn... You may examine the top card of your location deck. Oh, that adds a lot of strategic uh, strategic advantages there. And he has an ability called Sniper Shot. You may recharge a card to add 1d4 to a combat check at another location. Wow, that's really, really awesome. So this guy, he can snipe people. Where am I right now? I am in uh, the wooden bridge. So he can snipe all the way pew, into the woods and help my other character out. That's, that's insane. Okay, this location. Discard two cards to encounter. Alright, we're good. Let's go. Ooh, an archer card. You might think this is a monster, but the blue border lets you know it's an ally. So, we can either do a dexterity or a charisma. Our character is good with dexterity, so we'll have to do this. Um, so, right now we have a 50% chance. This is a D8 plus 3. And uh, reach if, if we obtain this archer, it's ours forever, which is good. Recharge this card to add a 1D4 to your ranged combat check. This card is extremely good for specifically my range character, which is the dwarf. So I want this card no matter what. Um, I could use the other blessing here, but I think we're going to use our blessing to get this card. If we fail it, it's going to be really sad, but it's a really good card to get. I cannot believe we failed it. Ah, <sighs> That really sucks. If you fail to acquire, it will be banished and no longer appeal appear in this scenario no longer appear in this scenario you mean like forever so you can't farm an item i guess oh no i didn't know that so wait can you like have a scenario be totally devoid of stuff no i'm pretty sure they fill it in with something else but that's really bad that that just happened filled up by one Ugh. i have this crow ally here um, let's see, I can recharge this card to add 1d6 to acquire a weapon armor item or discard it to keep exploring. Well, let's explore, huh? I We have a good chance of finding a, a weapon enemy here. Ooh, another person here. So, look at there, I have a quest in the bottom, that's funny. 
Um, this is a sage. Uh, there's no way I'm going to get this thing unless I use the blessing here. Uh, how good is this card? Recharge it to add 1d6 to non-combat intelligence or wisdom. It's an okay card, but it's fine. So let's 100% fail. And we'll end our turn. Now, I didn't say it, but when you end your turn... So that thing's gone forever. It's banished, huh? Ugh. So it's, it's, it's going to be here now. You get two more cards to end your turn. End of turn actions. We're good. We're good. Oh, yeah. I can look at the top card. Looking at the top card of my next one, it is a rusted half plate. So look at that. Constitution Fortitude check. Constitution Fortitude 3. Recharge to reduce combats. What's my constitution? You, after you have examined a location, you may click the examine and to view it again. So our constitution's good. We should absolutely be able to get that. So it's the next turn. It goes straight to here. And you just keep going. Uh, all right, let's begin. Ooh, a quarter staff. It's a pretty okay card. 100% chance, because it's a 100% chance. Because if you if you get a one, we have a plus three, so that's good. 100% chance. Low roll. That's fine. Quarter staff. Nothing else to do. I I can't continue. We have to leave next area. All right. So I said before, if you run out of cards in your main deck, you can't draw anymore. You die. Her character, she has an ability called Heal. Instead of Exploration, you may um, shuffle one random card. Let's see. I, I discard a card and then... Oh, no, no, no. <coughs> Sorry. Um, let's see. Um, shuffle 1d4 plus 1 random cards from your discard pile to the deck. So no matter what, it's always going to be 2 to 5 cards that you heal that goes back into your recharge. But then you lose one card in your hand so it's actually a really powerful spell and i really wanted a healer for this um actually it might be good to do this right now i'm gonna heal so this is instead of your first exploration i'm gonna i'm gonna do this i'm gonna heal okay i'm gonna get rid of oh no 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 i, I messed up yeah you have to reveal a card that has the divine trait so you have to get rid of the blessing of the holy water. Holy water is good for undead minions. Actually, I'll just get rid of this then. So I'm going to reveal it. It's gone. I reveal it. Uh, let's see. Reveal. Yeah, I reveal it. I reveal it. Now I shuffle. Now we get four cards in my discard to my deck. So all of my cards come back. Which were pretty good cards. I think I'll use the two blessings of the gods, right? So we're going to do that. Then I'm going to end my turn. I got Guidance back. Alright, so we now know what it is. It's going to be a quick check for an armor set. So we'll go ahead and re-roll this. Easy peasy. So I'm going to end my turn now. Or I can use this. Um, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to go ahead and just discard. So we have to discard down to 5. Leather armor. Or a uh, rusted half plate. This is a heavy armor. However, because we're not proficient in heavy armor, it doesn't matter because this one doesn't have any like, oh, if you don't have proficiency, this bad thing happens. So it's good. So I can recharge to reduce combat or recharge this to reduce one. So I'm going to get rid of this. End of turn actions. Okay, we're going to get rid of this. And optional discards. For instance, if I think something is really bad, for instance, a sling. Hold on. I have a sling and a light crossbow. Which one do I want to use? For your combat check, reveal it. Ranger skill plus 1d8. And I may discard it for 1d4. I also have a sling here. Um, let's see here. For your combat check, reveal it. Range plus 1d6. And discard it for 1d4. I'm going to get rid of this holy water. So that brings me down to 4. But then we draw at least one more at the beginning. Alright, let's begin. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to check. Ooh, I forgot to check. That's really bad. All right, anyway, let's go. Finally, our first monster, and we took a hit. A goblin Commando. Before you act, the Goblin deals 1D ranged combat damage to you. I'm going to get rid of this, uh, actually. I'm going to recharge this. So I'm going to recharge it to reduce the combat by 1. So, um, let's see. Combat, combat, combat. Um, combat damage that you take is the difference between what you roll against their combat check. So, right here is combat check is a 9. If I rolled a 7, you know, for fighting him, I take 2 damage. And that would mean I have to discard 2 cards. So, that's how it works. 
I'm going to go ahead and recharge this to reduce it by one, which means zero. So it just goes back in here for me to draw again. And I will say okay. Now we have to fight this guy. See, look at that. We're so strong already. Our D10 plus a 3 is 13 against the 9. But of course, we're going to reveal an item here. We'll reveal this and bring it up to an 83. Uh, can I reveal something else? Can I reveal something else here? Longsword. 87%. This is 83%. So of course... We're just going to use the long sword, and if we fail, you may discard it to add another 1d6, but you have to discard beforehand, you know. But we're good. 87%. If I fail, I quit. Good. Good, God. Killed him. Get a little bit of money, gold, and we defeated the event. Six cards left, two enemies. Next turn. What is this here on the bottom right? Look at that. Powerful single items that can be used. Ah. So you have to buy these? Examine the top card. So th these are just to help you. What is this? Turn the tide of the scenario. Oh, so that's what you use. Huh? Okay. You get gold to help you out. Next turn. So I don't know how well we are doing, but I hope I am explaining the game enough that you guys, you know, who are interested can follow along. And hey, if you're like a super crazy guru at this game, sorry if I'm like slogging the game down, but I really want my audience to be excited as I am because this game is actually really fun. I am like I have zero bars remorse at the moment. All right, sneak. This is a minion right here. Ugh, the difficulty to defeat him is increased by the number deck. So, yeah, it's hard to defeat because we have three people. Before you act, you must succeed at a wisdom or perception, or or I discard a card because he basically like steals from you. You know, I'm gonna activate guidance for this. And increase it to 50. Actually, no. I'm gonna go ahead and not do it. Because for eight, okay, here's the deal. If I guidance and I increase the chance and we lose, we still have to discard a card. Here, 41% chance. But if we lose, which we didn't, but if we did, I would have to discard a card anyway, right? And I would probably get rid of guidance. So let's fight this jerk face. Okay, so we finally got, you know, the weapon that is in this deck from the beginning, and that's mace. For your combat check, reveal it. Melee plus windy eight, and we can discard it for another d4. So I will reveal it. There are no, um... There's no downsides to just revealing this, as a, as opposed to this, you know, you know, the, the, the um, we're not proficient with it yet. I would use guidance to put it up to 79%, and roll. Eight. Are you joking? We lost, and we have to discard one card. I'll get rid of the short sword. That really sucks. That was really bad. I can't believe we lost. I'm gonna recharge guidance here by rolling a four or higher. Uh, so it's discarded. Oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> Are you like kidding me right now? Alright. Here we go. We're down to 21 turns left. This is like not good. It's like the game really takes it down to the wire, you know. I'm one third away done with the scenario. Okay, let's do this. Blessings of Destina. We've received the blessing. Discard this card to add one. Any check. Discard it to any any check to recharge the card. Um, discard this card to explore again. After you play this card, if the top card has a Destiny trait, recharge and does discarding it. Alright. Um, it's a really good card. I'm going to go and use a blessing here. Hopefully we get it. I want this blessing. Go. I know, it's only a 5 check, but our guy's intelligence is low. So now we have this card, and I mostly got it, so I can discard it and keep going. But now we have that butterfly forever. A giant gecko. If undefeated, shuffle the gecko into a random open location. Now, open location just means an area that we're not in, such as a wooden bridge or woods. Okay, we'll combat this guy. I'm going to show my uh, crossbow here. 90% chance. 10. <sighs> it's really scary not getting those, like, really high percent chances, like... I think we failed at 80 plus earlier. Okay. That's good. Next. Back to Vala Valoros. Right. Oh, yeah. Here we go. I can see the top card, which is a bandit. Huh. Good thing I kept the blessing here. Does he do anything special? Before you act, recharge a card. Ooh. So he basically steals from you, but then goes right back already. If defeated, oh look at that, that's really cool. If defeated, you may immediately attempt to close the location. That's really awesome. That's gonna save five more, potentially five more turns here, so that's amazing. All right, let's go. This guy's like decked with weapons, it's amazing. Ha! Oh, a zombie. 50% chance. I'm gonna, you know, I have so many weapons. 
I'm gonna defeat him. What's this? 83% chance or I can discard it for a 97. We have so many weapons that I think I actually might just discard for now. But if I do, it'll be like a short sword or something. That's his mace do. So I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of this mace. I There's no way I want to lose this fight, dude. My, this guy's a crazy fighter. I can't. There's too many weapons in my hand. I think we'll do that. Um, for your combat check, you may additionally discard. I can recharge this? Why can I recharge this? I don't understand. Wait, what tells me that I can recharge it? Oh, oh, the zombie. Oh, the zombie card did it. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't see it. I was looking around like what gave me the ability to do that? Okay, man. She, she's not doing too well. Seven here. <laughs> All right. Ooh, braces of protection. Good basic roll. Got it. That's good. Ugh, I'm falling really behind in this place. I might have to just activate the blessing. Nah, we'll keep going. Okay. This is it, guys. The bandit. Encounter or evade? Yeah. We're gonna fight this guy. Before I act, I have to recharge a card. I'm gonna recharge my thieves tool. Which helps with, um, you know, uh, like that, stuff like that. Alright. Light crossbow. 90% chance we better win. Are you kidding me? Discard three. Or I could discard this. Recharge. I can't believe. If defeated. Oh my. I can't believe we just lost. Oh, he's back in there. Dude, we just lost a 90% chance. That's RNG for you guys. That's RNG for you. Oh, God. That really lowering. Okay, please let it be him again. Pit trap coming up. And I just got rid of my tools. Ugh. I should have discarded, but dude, come on. A 90% chance is no, I'm discarding that. Salahu and Asana. Recharge this card for D4 to range. It's good to get. Not for me though, but good to get. Or reveal it to examine the top card to recharge or discard for another one. So this is good. Um, I'm going to keep all my blessings and hopefully we get it. Wow, diplomacy up, huh? Come on. Uh, of course. Oh, well, nice try. Bye, lady. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Pit trap. If defeated, I might explore again. If undefeated, I take damage. Huh. Damn. So, here's the thing, though. The pit trap it was coming up, but it was coming up for him, not her. I'm going to have to just... I, like, we're really pressed for time, and I would love to explore again. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to explore again. That's going to mess with my combat. Well, let's go. I'll explore now. Mercenary. Uh-oh, this guy. The difficulty. Okay, he's a 10. Wow. Okay, I'm going to discard a card here. Huh. Uh, 10%. Because it's because our uh, our proficiency is not good. 61%. Come on, please. Yes. I had to get rid of the sword, the sword sword. Cool. We're down to four cards here. Damn it. Guys. Oh, this is not good. It's not looking good. All right. So we know the pit rat's coming up. <laughs> I'm going to have to use this. Eight. Barely. Holy crap. Okay. Explore again. And we got ourselves the bugbear. Hmm. Combat 10. What's the short bow do? Alright. If proficient, you may discard it to add 1d4. Or to combat check for another character. That's really good. <clears throat> Dude, I can always just discard this to add 1d4 to fights. That's really awesome. I'm going to discard this to add the d4 here. And get the 80% chance. I hate this game. Oh. My. God. We actually lost, and all of our cards are going away. I cannot believe that just happened. We're going to draw five more. 
I have to choose a weapon or item to bury. So remember, bury means that it's just gone for the scenario, not forever. Oh my god, this is so bad. I think we're going to lose our first scenario to show you guys. Who's coming up next, the bandit. Man. Well, we got lots of blessings here. Blast stone. We got it. So this card is a one-time use banish. And it adds one to any combat check. 1d4. Which is good. I have to get rid of a card though. I will get rid of my potion of hiding. It's to succeed at a stealth check. That's good. Oh god. Please let this be the end here. What's this item cure? Reveal this card to choose a character at your location. To cure. After playing this card, if you do not have a divine skill, banish it. Okay, let's go. Oh, superior longsword. Not a lot of good stuff here. I don't really care about this roll. Oh my god, we got it. Okay, I'll take it. Guys, we have 13 left, and there's two locations left. Um, I think we're gonna lose. <laughs> Honestly, I think we're gonna lose this. Huh. <sighs> Dang it. Well, yeah, we're probably gonna lose. Um, I guess I will cure. Cure myself. Because I'm gonna discard anyway. So I, re I get four cards back into my deck. Four random cards, and I will try to recharge this by Divine Eight. Which we got it, so that goes back into my deck. So this character is really good, but like, you can't kill everything, you know? Uh, discard. Wait, I thought we got it back. After playing it, if you do not have Divine Skill, banish it. If you succeed at Divine 8... Wait, I thought we got it. I thought we got the roll. I could be wrong. Okay, Valeria. Sorry, this guy. Counter or invade. We gotta fight. There's no way to catch up. I have to recharge one before I act. I'm gonna get rid of this crowbar. This is a non-combat strength check or defeat a barrier. I'll recharge this. Okay, recharge. And we're gonna add a short bow into here, 87. Yeah, we, we lost a 90% chance. So what do you think our uh, losing out here? Okay, thank you. Yay, if defeated, you may close the location. Yes, I wish to close the location. So we're using this. As a dexterity check, 84% chance. Boom, baby, 12. Oh my god, thank you. Whoo, banishes any other card. You know, if we had a lot of time left, I would go through the rest of the deck and maybe earn some new stuff. But there you go. But there you go. When closed permanently, you can bury, you may bury a card to recharge a card from your discard pile. No, I don't want to do that. Oh my god, one area down. By the way, the plague zombie is immune to mental and poison. If undefeated, banish the plague zombie, and each character um, either has to do a check or take acid damage. We got this. We're long sword this up at 73. I'm going to blast stone it as well. I'm going to banish the blast stone. 89. God, got him. Oh, this is rough, man. This is rough. 10 turns left. Bandit, if we kill him, we can recharge. So we're going to do this right now. I have to, uh... I have to recharge something. Okay, this is reduce combat by 1. Reduce damage by 2. If proficient, you may perform another armor on this check. Oh, that's cool. Okay, we'll get... We'll uh, recharge this. And we're going to fight using our mace. 79%. 8. Barely. Oh my god, these rolls are crazy. Close location, yes. We have to do a wisdom roll. I don't want this to fail. Nine, 93% chance, please. 16. All right, we're closing areas left and right. This, this might be good, boys. This might be good. We got this. Okay. What's next? Okay, we got to leave the location. Okay, so the bad guy wasn't there. We got to move. This is, uh, let's see. Summon and defeat a bandit henchman. Or it might not even be the bandit henchman. So we're going here. Woo. Oh, man. All right, we're here. Let's do it. Wow, we, we found him. We found him. He was the first card of the deck. Before you act, recharge two. Oh, man. So, this is what happens. I can tell you we're new here. So, I'll give you one piece of advice for free. 
Get out. Leave sand points behind you and no one needs to get hurt. I'll make this off at once. That's a fact. I think I'll enjoy this. No, 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 no. When you encounter a villain, characters in other locations may temporarily close their locations. Characters must complete the closing requirements, but this will prevent the villain from escaping there. Closing locations to defeat wins. So, like I said, if we defeat this guy, now it's really bad because this character is not here. She'd be able to temporarily close it. This is not good. Whew. Okay, so I'm going to temporarily close this player area. I'm going to close this location. Yes. Summon and defeat a monster. A bunyip. Yeah. Before you act, succeed a wisdom nine. Uh, or difficulty is increased for one for the rest of the turn. That's not. That's not bad. It's a zero percent chance. But uh, the difficulty is one plus. That's fine. I'll fail it. Take it. Take it, bro. Okay. Now we got. We get this long sword. Ninety-five percent chance. Are you? Cho oh my god. Dude, are you kidding me? Well, we failed to uh to do that. I wish to recharge this, please. That's a pretty feels bad moment. Now we gotta fight this guy. It doesn't even matter if we kill him because he just runs away. We have to recharge too before the fight. This. Oh man, I guess I'll have to get rid of this and hope we win. All right. I'm a short, short, I'm gonna do this. 13, so he's gone, but he's gonna run away. Like a wuss. I don't know where he goes. Okay, one of those two areas. So I closed this area, which is good. This area is now closed, and we can leave the next turn. I have to discard one. Why do I have to discard one? Oh, when permanently closed, all characters must discard one card. Goodbye, crowbar. This guy has one HP left, by the way. He's dead. He's dead. He died. He died for this scenario. Damn. He took out the boss, but he died. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God. Okay, so he's either... This is what's awesome. He's either at this location that he's at, or he ran over here. I really hope he's at the farmhouse. Back to the farmhouse. I have only a longsword left. It's just a bandit. I'll have to just... Look at that. Before you act, recharge a card. I picked up a dagger at least. For your combat, dexterity or range plus one. The, the dagger wasn't even originally in my deck. When playing another weapon that you haven't already played... Um, on this check, you may discard this card for another combat check. So I can use it like as a two-handed thing. I can recharge for that at E4. I can just show it. I'll just show it. Actually, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We do more damage without it because this is a <laughs> because this is a combat melee, which is D10. If we use this, we have to use a dexterity. So we do we do we do much better with our our fist hand to hand. But it's a fail fish. Discard two. Yeah, it's not going well. But hey. Yeah. That sucks. At least my, my, uh, this chick isn't gonna die anytime soon. So she finished. I think we should... Uh, it's only seven turns left. I think we're gonna go together. So you can put them together, and now she can actually heal him. If need to. Or finish this thing together. Thieves tool. Who cares about this? I don't care. I got it. I didn't get it. Okay, and turn. Now it's this guy again. Let's go. The bandit again. I have to recharge one. What's this mad talk? It's a weapon. Reveal this card to add 1d8 to non-combat strength. Recharge it to use strength or melee instead of the normal skill in a check to defeat a barrier. <laughs> That's cool. I'll get rid of... Actually, I don't even have a weapon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of this um, wooden shield here. So it's another 60% chance. I'm saving this blessing. Thank you. So we defeated him. Now we can immediately close the location by finding yet another minion, which is a skeleton. Another 60% chance. 10. Good. Location closed. Now we have six turns to find the boss in the last location and end this thing. Let's get the heck out of here. Oh, wait, 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 wait a second. He's here? Wait, I thought we closed it. What is this then? Oh, it's him. He was here all along. 
four, I have to recharge two. What do I get rid of? Rancior quarter staff. We got this. Why did I get a plus? Uh... Oh, look at that. That's right. His ability, guys. Remember his ability. He has teamwork. Add 1d4 to another character's combat check in the location. I'm also going to add a blessings of the god. And I'm also going to be fighting with my mace. 96% chance. Let's go, guys. If we lose, I give up. Thank you. We have defeated the boss. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. baby oh, we got him. Feels good. He ran away. I used everything on that, but he ran away. I forgot he runs away. We have five turns left. <sighs> Rookie mistake, guys. Rookie mistake. You know what I should have done? I should have ran to the last location with my other character. And closed it. Rookie mistake. I have four turns to kill him. With 12 cards in the academy. Oh, man. Uh, I need, them. need a miracle here. Detect evil or spell. During your turn, discard it to look at the top card. If it's a monster, you may immediately encounter it. Whatever. That's not good. I literally used everything I had. Because I thought... Well, I messed up. Well, good news, if we do happen to find him, uh, we're really strong together, which is nice. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Uh, look at Doctor Strange over here. Uh, let's see. Display this card when a monster deals damage to you. You may play it even if you have played another spell. While displayed, you are dealt damage by a monster. Roll 1d4. Other than one, reduce the damage to zero. At the end of the turn, if you do not have the arcane, banish it, discard it. It's pretty cool. I don't care about upgrading it. Mirror image. Oh, God. We have two turns left to find him. Oh, damn it. Ah. Diplomacy six. We now have it, which is good. I will kill. Oh, I can continue exploring? Why was I able to continue exploring? Was it his ability? Teamwork, weapon mastery. I don't know what allowed me to keep going. Uh, oh, look at this. Look at Here we go. On the first exploration of your turn, if you encounter anything other than a spell, you may immediately explore again. Oh, so if I roll this, I get to explore again. Banish of ghostly form. So we get to explore again. Oh, it's the first one. I will discard to explore again. Blessings of God. I will uh, discard to explore again. We have two turns left. That's why we're doing this. If you've de if defeated, you may immediately attempt. I have to recharge one. Potion of ghostly form. This is um, evade a barrier. Yeah, get rid of that. We should be able to take him out. If only she was attacking him. Come on. Wow. 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 That's, uh, it's not good. Are we down to one turn? Wait, wait, I gotta, I gotta go again. I have to try. Cultist. If undefeated, shuffle the top card of the blessing into your location deck. All right, here we go. Ooh, 50% chance. Nice. Now, this is uh, pretty bad because we are on our last turn. I'm not sure if it goes to zero that we have a chance or it's over. But this is it. What does Mending do? Allow a character to discard an armor, weapon, or item and then draw that card from the discard pile. I don't like this card that much. Please be it. No, it's not it. I think we lost. Unless it goes down to zero and then we might have a chance. <sighs> Alright, I got this card. What the hell does this do? I got Lightning Touch. Lightning Touch. For your combat check, discard it to use your Arcane skill plus D24. Do we even have Arcane for this character? I think we have... Uh, no, we don't. We have Divine, not Arcane. Um, after playing it, if we do not even have an Arcane, you banish it. Otherwise, you keep it. Ugh. 
That feels bad, guys. Please, give me one more turn. <gasps> last turn, last turn. Oh, come on, come on. Give me the guy. Ah, we lost. <laughs> uh, we lost. Uh, I can keep this, though, because we have to do a arcane check. I can discard a... Uh, I can re I can recharge it to uh, add another thing to it, so I, I get to keep this acid arrow. And there's no way to redo it. We lost, guys. I was so close. I messed up. I really messed up. I did some rookie mistakes, but that was my first time. Your party has run out of time, so this is my first time completing a campaign. We we completed it for 40 gold at least. He died, and uh, let's see what happens. So, oh man, so yeah, <laughs> so here's the deal. Each character can have a specific kind of cards in it. We have five weapons, two weapons, five weapons, and this is their whole deck. We've collected a bunch throughout the whole game and we have to take some out and, re and put them back in and all that stuff. So I'm gonna be working on all this stuff. I'll figure out what's best for my characters. And then you can put them in something called a stash here. If you put it in a stash, um, you can only have up to 10 to mix and match between all your characters. The rest of them, I believe, you, you sell them for more money. And these are unclaimed. These are cards found in the treasure chest as a copy and added to the unclaimed. They can be moved into the stash. It's like a one-time thing. But yeah, we can have cards to move in here. So yeah, I'm going to figure out what's going on and we'll, we'll, we'll try it again. So I'm going to end it. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like. It helps so much. If you haven't already, please subscribe for daily videos. And remember, every time we play, it's a little bit of a RNG manipulation, which enemies are where, which items we get. But hey, you do earn gold if you lose, no matter what. And you do keep the cards that you got. So you can, like I said, you can meta your deck to make sure each one works out well. And uh, another thing, if once you level your characters, you can maybe increase the amount of armor they get and items. So there's other ways of doing that. So yeah. Uh, like I said, I like this game a lot. This was um, Pathfinders, the digital board game, single player. I think they might add multiplayer in a future, for your future thing. So please let me know what you think in the comments below. If you guys wish to see more, let me know. I'm more than happy to play because this is fun. And th that whole campaign, it took about an hour. Imagine if I didn't explain everything. It might go down to 40 minutes. But hey, that was fun. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.